Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming. For those of you uh, who have been to one of these nutrition talks, uh, we've been trying to push it as much as we can the last week or so. Uh, this is kind of segment one of a two-part segment. Dr. Tony's going to talk today from Premier Wellness Chiropractic. And then next Sunday, Dr. Sebastian, who's in the back, is going to be talking um, from Precise Chiropractic. So um, they're going to have pretty much similar views for the most part. So if you can make it to both talks, it'd be great. You'll probably get a little bit out of each one, but uh, a lot of similarities as well. He's going to do his in Polish. <laughs> <laughs> There's some organic bananas up front, guys, if you want to grab something to eat. Um, I think Tony's going to raffle off a few things at the end. Um, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tony. Awesome. Thanks, sir. So yeah, we have bananas, pens. If you guys, if you want to take notes or anything, there's, there's pens there, and then we have handouts too, which you can grab at the end of this. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into this instead of doing a big like PowerPoint presentation and that sort of stuff. What I really wanted, well, who's who's heard this before? Who's been here before? No, no, Dave's here. Okay, all right. So most of you guys are new, which is good because. We're going to really dive into this, but I want this to turn into more of a conversation and kind of Q&A sort of thing um, as well as we go along. I like this setting of being in CrossFit and being in my sweatpants and being able to write man boobs on the board. This is a little <laughs> more entertaining. Of a, so for you, those are my patients. I have pre-warned you here, all right? This is CrossFit style talk of uh, failure of nutrition. Um, and Miss Julie is also going to be here with us today and uh, be helping us out. Julie, um, with Miko, has done wonderful things for herself and her family. And Julie is going to be there too as we get into kind of Q&A at the end. Um, <clears throat> Julie and I were meeting on Thursday or Friday. And going through, Julie is a very much of the kind of how-to. I'm going to cover kind of the why and the what a little bit more mostly today. So kind of the concepts, the thinking, the why behind it. And then we're going to try and morph that into, for you guys, okay, well, how do we actually apply that and go forward? So, the beautiful thing about the paleo lifestyle, paleo nutrition, I don't even like to call it the paleo diet. The beautiful thing about it, it's not a diet. It is a way of living, okay? Everything that we try and teach and incorporate in this world of chiropractic, CrossFit, paleo, is not that it's a restricted, you need a calculator every time you go to the grocery store, you need an app, you need all this other sort of stuff, diet. It is really flippin' simple. The CrossFit Paleo lifestyle is really stinking simple, and that is the best thing that can, that my favorite thing about this, because then it's actually sustainable, okay? Who here has been on a diet before, like Weight Watchers or Atkins or South Beach, that sort of stuff? Okay, what's the longest anybody made it on one of those? Four months. That's pretty good, actually. And so, and every time you go to Barnes and Nobles, right? If you go to the diet and nutrition section, there's there's more than one or two books in there, right? It is a billion dollar industry for a reason. All of those start and fail, start and fail, start and fail. Do some of them get you to lose weight? Yeah. But is it is, is it sustainable? It is not. So what we really try and do with this, what I really try to slice this up as, really simple. Don't do. And do do, all right? Rachel left. <laughs> Gonna make fun of her before we started, but so not. And then we added one more just for Matt. Number four is what the Packers applied last night. Do not tackle Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> we'll even touch him. All right, we'll cover that one. <clears throat> Forty-five points is the pass. All right. So what were they beat the Vikings? I'm a little salty still from the week before. You stopped your whip. So, but here's what this comes down to. This is in quotation marks. What I want you to get out of this is not a way to lose weight, not a way to do that sort of stuff. That will all come with it. What really, really motivates me every single day as we go forward is to teach people how to live a really, really kick-ass lifestyle, okay? For those of you, whose parents in here? Okay, so I really want you guys to pay attention to this too because everything, that's another beautiful thing about the way of paleo eating is because it's really simple for our kids to adopt this way of eating, okay? It, it really is frustrating, Julie and I talk about this a lot too, when parents would come in and they go, well, I eat paleo, and their kid's in the corner, you know, throwing down some goldfish or honey grams or something, okay? This is the exact same way of eating for everybody, okay? And, and it's easier than you think. We'll try and get into that today. So, really, if you're crossfitters, you got to move at full speed, okay? So the why behind this is bigger than necessarily saying, i got to lose 20 pounds or I want to do this. What I really want you to think about is, okay, if I really cleaned up my nutrition, if I really moved to the paleo diet, what would I get out of it? 
What would life look like going that way? What would CrossFit look like? What would my relationship with my kids look like? What would my energy levels look like? Okay? It's not just the stuff you're going to get rid of. Of course that's good too, but it's all the stuff that you get with. Um, this is just, I am a father of three young kids, and more so than being a chiropractor, a CrossFitter, and that other sort of stuff, my number one job on this planet is to be a kick-ass dad. And I will tell you that living and eating paleo really allows me to do that. And when I fall off the wagon and I'm not, my energy suffers, and when my energy suffers, my time with my kids suffers. And I don't, I don't really like that to happen, so, so we, pretty, we stay pretty clean with it, okay? All right, so, number one thing to don't do. I'm going to fly through this one really quick. This will be our first reference to man foods, but this isn't so much to do with the paleo diet. This is to do with all diets. One of our first things that we teach people when they start to clean up their nutrition is to really just flat clean it up. Okay? The beautiful thing about the paleo diet is it's just real, actual food. It's not in a package, it's not in a box, it's not in a can. It is real food. Because when food comes in a package, in a bag, in a box, or in that sort of stuff, what comes with it? Preservatives, pesticides, added sugars, added salt, all that other sort of stuff. Okay? We call them the peas, preservatives, pesticides, all that sort of stuff. And especially for you ladies, this is kind of one to really pay attention and to maybe make this the first move for you, and not only for, for, for women, but also for kids, okay? Because what a lot of these chemicals do, and we're going to circle back to this a couple times in this first section, a lot of the chemicals in those foods, and dairy, and, and even in the grains, they mimic hormones in our body. A lot of them actually mimic estrogen sort of responses, and they're what we call neuroendocrine disruptors. So when those chemicals and preservatives get into your body, your hormonal gland <coughs> system sees them as kind of stimulants, okay? And it starts to change things. A lot of fertility issues, a lot of menstrual issues, a lot of man boob issues are related to too much of this crap in our body, and our body not only having an inflammatory response to it, but having an endocrine response to it. It's huge for our kids who are developing too, okay? I live across the street from a junior high, and you just watch, first off, I sound like an old man now, and I go through this now that my daughter's getting there. But it's crazy, um, and maybe Dave Marshall would have liked this if he was in junior high when this was going on, but is it not that kids are developing a little bit sooner than they ever used to? Where I'm really going is, why do you think that is? We're going to dig into it with dairy. It's because of all these nasty things that are circulating through their body and driving females especially into kind of just onset of menses and that's so much quicker, okay? This is a huge, huge, huge issue because if you don't clean that up, it also really affects your metabolism, okay? These things, by mimicking that system, really, really mess with metabolism. And women, as a whole, generally have a more difficult time losing weight, okay? So in our office, we run a program called Eight Weeks to Wellness, where we really transition people right away kind of into this diet, into functional fitness, into that sort of stuff. Guys, when they get into cleaning up their diet, they literally will drop weight like crazy, and women have a little bit of a tougher time, okay? The reason for that is exactly what we're digging in right now. Women, and I say this as a nerdy, science kind of <coughs> chiropractor guy, not a husband who wants my wife to slap, to slap me, Women are much more hormonal than men are, all right? You're much more susceptible to that stuff. So if we don't regulate this first, a woman's hormones and metabolism really stays off track and it's hard for, for them to lose weight. So I, I jumped this right off the bat because so many diets and so many nutrition things. <laughs> My wife was getting a haircut the other day and, and she goes to the same gal that right across the parking lot from us is, is where their place is. And she was talking about how she wants to lose weight. <clears throat> so she's going to start drinking a slim fast shake every morning instead of having breakfast. Is that not, this is just a horrible, horrible thing. It's still that same calorie intake. But what's that slim fast shake have a ton of it in? Sugars and, and chemicals, okay? <clears throat> so that's kind of where we go with this. All right. So number two thing that we really have to talk about. And the reason I'm going to try and dive these and cut these things apart right away in the beginning is because I actually want to spend more time talking about what we want to do because, but you have to kind of transition and, and know this stuff first. Okay, so dairy. If we go into our kids' school and you walk into the lunchroom, you've got all these schmucks, LeBron James, you know, all the, everybody's got their milk mustache, right? And they're telling us to eat dairy. Why do they tell us to eat dairy? Strong bones. Strong bones, right? And strong bones come from what? Calcium. Calcium, right. 
So who tells us <laughs> if you look at if, I guess I really delayed that answer, right? If you look at the bottom of those posters and the bottom of those ads and the bottom of those ads on TV, who pays for those ads? The U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Dairy Council. Okay. If I had enough money to run a commercial on TV and it said on the bottom, you know, paid for by the Crazy Ass Chiropractors Association, it would probably say something pretty positive about chiropractic, wouldn't it? It wouldn't. And so what I'm getting at with this is the whole food plate, well for us, you know, they switch it to the food plate, the, the food pyramid that we've all been taught is as backwards and upside down as it gets because the next two things we're going to really blow apart are the basis of that. Um, the first issue we have with dairy ties into actually number one there. Dairy is incredibly processed, okay? They, if, you, if you walk into a dairy farm, or in, in, into a dairy in Wisconsin, Iowa, wherever it may be, you're going to see some of the sickest, nastiest, most disgusting animals you'll ever see on the, on the planet, okay? They literally opened a 5,000 head dairy three miles outside of my hometown. Yeah. So I, I, that's, I, I should maybe even say that first. Real quick, the reason I have good understanding and fortitude on the back on the back side of this. One, yes, I'm a chiropractor. I have pediatrics and wellness and nutrition certifications. I've been studying this for the last 10 years of my life. But for the first 20 years of my life, I was a chubby, fat, farm kid who looked like, you know, an overweight Corey Matthews from Boy Meets World. Alright? <laughs> so I have I grew up doing nothing but this. Processed food, Schwan's man was our homie. Alright? <laughs> we got most of our food from Schwan's man. Then we got it from Wells Blue Bunny, the ice cream capital of the world. I grew up in Iowa, and we ate nothing but grains and corn, okay? I literally grew up on a soybean, corn, and cattle farm, all right? So when I first started hearing this stuff and went through it, it was really, really, really quite incredible. So that's my hometown. I am the, you know, black piranha going back for, for Christmas now when, when we eat paleo and have our yuppie meat as my uncle. My uncle is actually the... National Bacon Sales Manager for Cargill. The highest man regarding bacon. He sells more bacon in, than anybody on the planet. And that's the true statement. And so he hooked us up with some of our grass fed beef stuff and he calls it yuppie. My uncle is about 45, looks like he's 65, and is about 80 pounds overweight. Okay. So, long story short, where I'm going with this is the first thing is that it's very, very, very processed. The dairy they built outside of my hometown, which makes it smell even more pleasant than it used to, literally has two armed guards, okay? You cannot get a tour of the dairy outside of my hometown because it is so sick and nasty what they do in there. And I'm not making this stuff up. I tried when we were home, okay? It's because they pump the cattle so full of growth hormones and so full of corn, which we'll dig into in a minute, corn and grains is just sugar, okay? So the way you make more money in farming is you produce more, right? So you produce more fat and meat or you produce more milk. So they drive them full of growth hormones and they drive them full of sugar. So these cattle are the sickest, sickest animals out there, okay? They get no exercise, they get no sunlight, they're holed up in these huge gigantic barns and all of that stuff gets into the milk, okay? The USDA and the FDA and all that, they have acceptable amounts of things that can go into our food and into our milk and into our flu shots, right? Yeah, mercury's not good, all right? None of that stuff is good in our food or in our shots or any of that sort of stuff, okay? I had to throw a flu shot. So really where I'm going with that is, is first off, it's processed and it's full of crap. Second, Dairy, yes, it has calcium in it, and it also has a whole bunch of other crap. The protein in dairy, called casein, so who's, who's probably heard of like casein-free, gluten-free sort of diets, right? That's kind of picking up a lot of speed lately. Casein, so move to nerd style a little bit of this. Casein is a huge mongrel protein. If you look at it underneath the microscope, it has more carbon chains and more things to it than almost any other protein that we digest. What that means is that our digestive system has a really tough time breaking casein down into glucose, protein, and fat, okay? It has a really difficult time digesting, and let alone how bad we are at digesting due to all the rest of our lifestyle and that sort of stuff too. So what happens is casein becomes incompletely broken down in the digestive system, spills over into our bloodstream of our gut, and our body actually has an immune response to it because it doesn't see it as food, it sees it as a foreign invade, it sees it as a pathogen. When our body has an immune response, it creates inflammation, 
and it creates inflammation, it creates mucus to try and squash out that inflammation, okay? I always kind of make a joke about this, but it's absolutely true. Cows have four freaking stomachs for a reason, so they can digest their shit, okay? <laughs> Human beings cannot digest this. Milk, cow's milk, yogurt, whatever it is, dairy products are not meant for human beings. We are genetically incongruent with our ability to digest those foods, okay? It is absolutely atrocious. And so what happens is, and even this, if you take all of that and break down a simple thing, what is yogurt, what is cheese, and what does milk look like? What's the consistency of it? Yeah, fat, thick, mucusy stuff, right? What's happening right now to everybody, the, the flu pandemic, everybody's got cold and sinus and that sort of stuff. Because they're sitting on their ass inside eating bagels with cream cheese on them, all right? That is why people are sick right now. They have too much mucus production, production going on in their body. And dairy is a huge, huge, huge component of it. And I, I'm going to kind of jump ahead to this and we'll bring it back in the conversation with sugar and grains. But dairy at the same time, like, sorry, I've got to kind of blow this up so you guys can, can get the real concepts of it. Dairy is one of the absolute worst foods for our bones there is. Because dairy is a very acidic sort of food, okay? What happens is our body has an acid-base balance, or a pH balance. And it likes to keep our, our, our pH actually slightly alkaline, to about 7.2 to 7.4, okay? Reason being, anything in an acidic, or an acidic environment is corrosive, right? So if you put something in acid, you know, anybody remember the Stephen King movie, It? Have you seen that? Battery acid? Uh, Always yeah. My brother made, yes. I have a question. Yeah. After you Not regarding my childhood movies that I had watched. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I'm still terrified of clowns. Thanks that movie. <laughs> but where I'm going with that is acid is very, very, very corrosive. So when we eat a highly acidic diet, which dairy is a big, big, big piece of that, our body shifts our pH to a slightly acidic pH. Well, in our body, we have two major alkaline, so neutralizing ions, calcium and magnesium. Where do we store most of our calcium? Bones. So when we eat an acidic diet and our blood, our pH is actually acidic, what happens is it signals our body to actually leach calcium from our bones to neutralize and buffer that acidity. So it is a bold-faced lie. Dairy is one of the worst foods for our bones because we actually lose calcium. And first off, the calcium that's in it isn't really readily absorbable. And second, it actually causes us to leach and lose calcium from our bone. <coughs> There's been dairy posters and dairy commercials for decades and decades and decades. And is osteoporosis becoming a bigger issue or less of an issue? It continues to go forward. So we're, we're, we've done nothing about it, okay? So, the other thing too, you know what, related to CrossFit, so I'll try and throw as many little kind of asterisks that I can related to what we do in this community. The other uh, real kind of alkaline ion in our body is magnesium, okay? So magnesium is more in the muscles and calcium is more in the bones. Magnesium is the number one muscle relaxer in the entire body. It's kind of like our natural muscle relaxer. So on one hand, Magnesium is, tends to be in, in calcium in dark green leafy vegetables. We'll get into that when we come into this section. So we're not getting enough of them. And then we're eating enough of an acidic diet that our body actually leaches calcium and leaches magnesium to try and buffer our blood. And where I'm going with this is we actually get a lot of muscle cramp. Okay? When the muscles are low on magnesium, they become constricted, they become tight, they become spastic. So recovery from a workout, endurance from a workout, flexibility and mobility are all going to be greatly compromised if you don't eat the paleo diet, okay? So if you're having a real difficult time gaining mobility or you're having a real difficult time with recovery from your workouts and muscle soreness from your workouts, it may not be just lack of time on the foam roller and stretching out. The most likely culprit for that may actually be your diet, okay? You will be amazed as CrossFitters, when you clean this up and do what we're talking about here for this hour today, how much of a difference it makes in your performance at CrossFit. And we all know with CrossFit, you know, we're, we're not going to be Dave and Rosie, we're not going to be Lomans and Marshalls and, and rocking out on ESPN and that sort of stuff, but our own individual performances are huge, right? Hey, you didn't see them on ESPN. Um, <laughs> Be yeah. <laughs> but no, it's huge, right? So we love this for a reason. We love to measure our performance. We love to measure where we're at. Guys, you're going to be stuck in sludge. You're going to be stuck in slow response, slow recovery, slow improvements 
if you don't clean up your diet. So I'll reference back to this, which I forgot to mention this too. Uh, this is the, the pyramid of CrossFit, right? Why is nutrition on the bottom? Because you're not going to be real smooth at any of these physical capacities if your body's not running on rocket fuel, okay? If you put crap in the tank, your car's going to run like crap. Not chiropractic here. This is Sebastian with the bicep. This is not me. Okay? I'm holding this up. So push press again. But the reason I say this is a lot of people are, are, are mistaken on really what chiropractic is all about. If you come into Sebastian and I's office, it's, it's not just a whole bunch of, you know, old people with sore backs that were, were cracking and, and that sort of stuff, okay? Chiropractic's a lifestyle. And for those of you that know me, when we talk about chiropractic, the adjustments to core are what we do, but the teaching, the lifestyle is, is everything that we're about. So really, chiropractic admitted this, I'm pretty sure. Just, I, I'll find the reference. All right, so. Did I beat up the dairy, boots, boots, and fire away? Um, Yeah. At what point do, because we've that natural information to breastfeed our children, at what point do you stop giving them dairy? Or at least your own breast Stop, you stop giving yeah. them dairy? You mean if they're I on mean, formula? I guess, I don't know. Like, well, I, 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 I know. You kind of like wean them off. Yeah. Okay, great question. First off, truthfully, and, and that's the concept we all kind of have because pediatricians, see this, this is not a great question, this is one of my biggest, biggest pet peeves in the world being a, a pediatric chiropractor, because most people rely on pediatricians for the nutritional advice for their, their kids, right, as they go forward. Pediatricians have, let, by the time you get done today, you will have a 15-fold better understanding of nutrition than a pediatrician, okay? And I don't say that just because I, well, so I don't, Matt, don't let me get off of that stuff. But they just don't have the education and the understanding on that, okay? So the same thing is always perpetuated down. First foods, cow's milk, cereal grains, right? So really, the, best, the way I'm going to respond to that is to say, first off, they should never have to wean off the dairy because they should never be on it. So I'll, I'll start with kind of the ideal. Not even like breast milk. I'm not talking about like giving them like processed stuff. Or yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I know that. So really, first off, if, if the mother, the best way for a mother to be nursing her child should be if the mother is eating a paleo diet. Because if the mom is not eating a paleo diet, then that casein, which is already really difficult for a mother's digestive system to take down, is nearly impossible for a tiny little baby with a very immature digestive system to break down, okay? So that's why absolutely breastfeeding is the number one thing to do. What you want to do is you transition from breastfeeding to that is really, think of it, again, not to bring the farm thing back here, but even cows wean off of cow's milk. And what they wean onto is water, okay? Now, there is different options that we have these days from almond milk and those sort of things, but really children should get a little bit older before they do that. So, I, I must, so the ideal scenario would be for a mother to nurse at least one to two years and move forward to the point where once a child is done and weans off breast milk, that they can basically go to solid foods and a solid food diet 